passport, please. Thank you. Inspector Maigret, oh, I am so pleased to meet you. Inspector Bergsma, Netherlands Frontier Police. Uh, to Amsterdam. On business? I think so. Thank you. Inspector Bergsma. Yes. I'd be grateful if you would ask the uh, customs officer to examine the suitcase of the man down the corridor. I will do it myself. I'll show you. Customs. Customs. Dutch Frontier. Open this case, please. Filthy. One jacket, the same. And an equally dirty shirt. Why would anyone commit suicide for the loss of those? Well, he seemed poor, but... Um... When I first saw him, he had 30,000 Belgian francs. What? Where was that? Last night in Brussels. I had to come up to their police headquarters to talk about some Hungarians who were giving us trouble. Anyway, after the conference, I went along to a restaurant near the station. There was this man. Counting out the money in 100 franc notes. Dressed almost in rags. Yes. I watched him do them up into a parcel. Then I followed him to the post office. He posted the parcel to himself. Uh, Louis Genet, at 18 Rue de la Roquette in Paris. And he sent the parcel at the cheap rate as printed paper. What, 30,000 francs? Uh, he did not think much of it. Uh. Mm. It looked to me as though he was working under orders, so I followed him. He took the Amsterdam Express. Now, I'd noticed this suitcase. You can buy one like it almost anywhere, so I did. And just before you boarded the train, I changed it for his. Oh, but you could not know he would kill himself. Oh, why? What for? Look, hold up his own trousers. Well, you see, these are these are meant for a much taller man than he mm. didn't even his own suit. Oh, any information about him, Doctor? Age 30, 35, poor health, drank too much. He had done some manual work, but I would not say he was born to it. Mm. These look as if they've been soaked in oil or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a long time ago, huh? Not oil. Blood. Blood, you think mm -hmm. so? I'm sure of it. And the jacket? No. Oh. Whoever wore this must have wallowed in it. Would you like a detailed report? Yes, I would, very much. Mm -hmm. You will be going back to Paris? Yes, yes. I think it was employed by someone. I'll start our end. Well, if there's anything we can do, you only have to let us know. Hmm? Yes? They uh, told me to ask here if I wanted to see one of your inmates. Name? Mine? Uh, Joseph Van Dam, export agent. Cigar? Uh, no, thank you. Who do you wish to see? The uh, Frenchman. What's his name? Jeunet, the one who shot himself. How do you know about him? There's a piece in the paper. You think you might know him? I might. There aren't many French in Amsterdam. I used to live in Paris, actually. I'm Belgian from Liège. Mm -hmm. Will you have a cigar, monsieur? They're a special brand I export to America. Thank you very much. Perhaps you could see the body. This way? Straight. Anything about him? No. Hmm. Was it a headline in the paper? No, small paragraph. Ah. Made by a tailor in Liège. Never saw him before in my life. 
Mm. Why did you think he might have? Uh, answer, please. Uh, this is Inspector Maigret of the French police. The famous Maigret? Monsieur, I am honored. You must have lunch with me. Why did you think you might have seen Louis Jeunet before? I didn't. And why come here? Curiosity, call it that. The sign of a lively mind, I always say. What time would suit you for lunch? I'm sorry, monsieur. I have to return to Paris right away. Pity. Perhaps we shall meet again. Mm. Good day. Good day, monsieur. Good day. I'd like some information about him. Yes, I will send it with the medical report, and I suppose you would like photographs of the dead man? Uh, yes, please, for the press. Liège, yeah, Van Damme comes from Liège. Uh -huh. But Jeunet was a Frenchman from uh, Moulin. Or was he? My passport says age, height, color of eyes, color of hair, right? Yes. His says age, height, Color of hair, color of eyes. Ah, a forgery. Yes, I think so. It's from that printing works in Lille that we rounded up six months ago. Hmm. So all we know about him is that uh, he is not Louis Jeunet. Well, we have an address which is more than we sometimes start a case with. And we have a cigar. That's him. It was in this morning's paper. I only have time for the headlines. Have you a parcel addressed to Louis Jeunet? Parcel? Yes, a parcel. Have you? Well, I'm not sure. Oh, now, come on, come on, let's have it. Oh. Come on, come on, but oh, I've got all day. Bye. Anything in there? Uh, not much. A lot of ash. The concierge says that he worked for a factory around the corner that makes beer engines when he worked at all. Uh, what else do you do? Sat over here and drank with a look at the bottles. Mind you, we won't get much out of the concierge. They don't care for the police round here. Hmm. Why should we? A little cooperation saves a lot of trouble with them. Arrived yesterday. Oh, do you often get them like this? Every few months. I see. Is that when he started drinking? No, not specially. He drank when he felt like it. Alone? Hmm. Locked up in here. Hmm. Do you know what's in this? How would I? By opening it. Anyway, I know you haven't, because... Why? Well, I know what's in it. Oh. All right. All right, you can go. All right. 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. 30,000 Belgian francs. Enough for a lot of buttons of wine. Is that how he spent it? Well, what did he do with it? Yeah. I said you could go. There's someone to see you. Huh? This man, it, it said he lived here, so I came. You knew him? I, I was his wife. Mm. And up. <laughs> what was his name? Louis Genet. Like it says. Did he have much pain? None at all, madame. I was afraid of something like this. Why? Oh, he... He was never like anyone else. But I loved him. He loved us. You have children? One. A little boy. <laughs> we live with my mother now. Well, we did then, except for the first year of our marriage before things started getting bad. When did you first meet him? A about six years ago. He had a good job then, as a machine operator in a factory at Belleville. Where did he come from? He didn't say. He, he didn't like to talk about himself. But you were happy, huh? At first. Oh, I loved him all the time, but he became strange. Take my face in his hands and look at me. And he'd say, I love you. I do love you. As though he had to convince me of it. And then for a long time, he wouldn't talk to me at all. He wouldn't talk to us. You mean to you and your mother? She didn't like him. All the rows began with her, especially when he started drinking. When was that? Oh, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. Things got worse and worse until... 
We keep a grocer's in the Rue Poissonnière, and one night he he stole some money from the till and went. So you haven't seen him for two years? Only once. He came past the shop and looked in. I think he wanted to see our child, but when I ran out, he'd gone. Poor Louis. Will they send it? Will they send him back from Holland? Uh, it can be done. Now, madame, if we can have your signature to your statement. So if you'll wait outside in the car, we'll take you to headquarters, and we'll drive you home. Uh, not much help if she hasn't seen him for two years. Everything helps. You sure there's nothing in there? Oh, they've been broken up with a poker or something. I was going through them when you arrived. There's a corner that survived. That's all. Yeah. Now we know what he did with his money. Threw it on the fire. <laughs> Inspector Maigret? Oh, I am the owner of the Café de Paris in Reims, Inspector. Perhaps you know it. A very good class of establishment on the Rue Cardinal. We cater for all the leaders of local society and all the very best people. Oh, well, it's about this photograph in the newspaper. Yes, that's the one. I believe he was here yesterday week. Uh, no, no, certainly not one of our regular customers, no. Oh, well, certainly, Inspector, certainly. I shall expect you then. All right. I'll see you as soon as possible. Well, what are the trains to Reims? Sure, you won't take the car. No, waste of a driver. There may be nothing in it. Uh -huh. Well, it's straining the expense account. This isn't even official business yet. Ah, uh, here we are. Every hour from six to fifteen hundred, then every two mm. hours, except for the rapide, which leaves at eighteen thirty. Right. Take me through to my home, please. Ah, very good, monsieur, very good. Ah, thank you. Gaston, a fiend for monsieur Belvoir. Oui, monsieur. <coughs> well, it's very kind of you. Gaston. Yeah, I've earned it. Let's see if I can earn another. Yes. It's very difficult. A fiend and a word with the patron. Gaston, the patron. Ah, bravo. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm ready for this. Monsieur, <laughs> Excuse me, monsieur. Yes, of course. Monsieur? Chief Inspector Maigret, criminal justice. Oh, yes, uh, my telephone call. Uh, what will you drink? I have ordered, thank you. Is this the man you saw yesterday week? Yes. What was he doing? Drinking. Just that? Yes, he came in here about this time of the evening and sat at that table over there and ordered a fiend. And then another, and then another. And I particularly noticed him because, well, he wasn't the sort of person that we usually get in here. After all, we are the leading cafe in the town. Was he drunk? Uh, no, not exactly, but uh, he wasn't sober either. As a matter of fact, I was about to go over there and suggest that he'd had sufficient when he got up and left. Having spoken to nobody? No, but... Uh, well, a commercial traveller who left shortly afterwards said he did speak to Monsieur Belvoir. Don't look now, but he's a gentleman over there by the billiard table. Ah, did he hear what he said? Uh, no, but he said Monsieur Belvoir took this man to his house, and they both went inside. But I'm sure there must be some mistake, though. Why? Well, this man was such a bedraggled, wretched creature, not at all the kind of person Monsieur Belvoir would want to entertain. After all, he is the assistant manager of the Bank of Lorraine, young and doing extremely well. Married? Oh, yes, and they have a charming boy of five, and his wife, she's the daughter of a wine shipper. Oh, a very highly respected fan. I trust you're not going to make use of this information. I mean, if you do, you won't say you got it from me. I mean, well, you know what I mean. In my position, I, I have to be so very, very careful. Don't worry, monsieur. Monsieur Belvoir and I have a mutual friend. Oh. Why, if it isn't Inspector Maigret, my dear Inspector, what a lucky chance. Two days ago we meet in Holland and now here. Maurice, meet the Inspector, Monsieur Belvoir. How do you do? Also from the edge? Yes, yes, I am. You see, always the detective. He knows that's where I come from, so he thinks, uh-huh, perhaps his friend is from the same town. And so he is. 
We were boys together. Whenever I come to Reims, I always look him up. Won't you join us, Inspector? Come on, Maurice, sit down. The Inspector won't mind. Now, what shall we have? This is a celebration. A bottle of Blanc de Blanc? Have a cigar, Inspector. Here? Yeah? A bottle of Blanc de Blanc and the very best. Monsieur. What are we celebrating? Our meeting. You refused lunch in Amsterdam, so I'll entertain you here. Are you on business? Mm-hmm. Business, and you? The same. A new case? No, no. Louis Genet was here last week. Now, isn't that interesting? Isn't it? This is a man who shot himself in a train going to Amsterdam. Oh, suicide? It generally is when you shoot yourself. Ah, now, is that cool enough? Yes, I think so. Open the bottle, Pierre. I thought as the inspector was investigating, perhaps there might be some question of murder. Why? Well, when a man kills himself, that's usually the end of it, isn't it? Well, it depends what he kills himself for. In this case, for the loss of an old suit. <laughs> mad, quite mad. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you, Pierre. Good health, Inspector. Do he seem mad to you? To me? Hmm. When he approached you last week. Approached me? Yeah, after he'd been sitting in that corner drinking all evening. Oh, oh, that man. Don't tell me you've met him. Well, after I left here, he came up to me in the street and asked me for a light. I see. And you took him into your house and gave him one? No, certainly not. Whoever told you that? That's absolute nonsense. I told him I hadn't got the matches. I thought he was trying to beg. He never came near my house. It's typical of the provinces. Someone sees him come up to you and before you know where you are, the rumour goes around that he's your long-lost brother. It's the same at home. You can't be too, uh, careful. No, you can't be too careful. If it isn't Jeff Lomba, another old friend. Inspector Maigre, who is investigating a case of great complexity involving a suicide on a Dutch train. And also an old suit, bloodstained, and 30,000 Belgian francs. Sit down, Chef. Yes, and a glass. Pierre, a glass for our friend from Liège. He still lives in Liège, don't you, Chef? Yes, I, um, I work there. I, I'm a photographer. He paints, too. He's a real artist. How is the old town, Chef? Oh, no different. Do you know it, Inspector? Yes, oh yes, I've been there. I hope to go there again. Perhaps if I do, I can call on you. Good idea. Give me your card, Jeff. I'm afraid it's a professional card. That's Never all mind. I heard. Perhaps I can come and have my photograph taken. Are you going, Inspector? Yes, I have to go back to Paris. Oh, then I'll come with you. We'll just have time to catch the last train. Goodbye, Maurice. Goodbye, Jeff. I uh, hope to see you both soon. What does he know? That's what Joseph has gone to find out. Glad to have a companion on this journey. It's rather tedious traveling alone at night. Ah, here she comes. Ah, Bertrand. Anything new? No. And you? Yes, yeah, this. Don't go home yet. Wait outside in the other office. Right. Now, what can you tell me about the dead man? Will you tell me why you brought me here? Answer my question. I've nothing to say unless you're charging me with some crime. How about attempted murder? In that case, I shall want my lawyer. I know the law as well as you do, Inspector. You'll need to. I can't think why. What have I done? You fell onto the line at Reims. I suppose you must have been craning over the edge of the platform to see if the train was coming and overbalanced. Thank heavens no harm was done. I felt your hand on my back. 
Of course. I tried to stop you. Anyone who saw us would tell you that. Nobody saw us. Oh, what a pity. Some witnesses would have been useful. Mm. As it is, all I can say is that you fell onto the line, and all you can say is that I helped you up and made no attempt to escape. What about the dead man? Well, just because we meet in Amsterdam, and then by pure chance in Reims, where I have a friend of the utmost respectability, you assume that I have something to do with the death of a man who is known to have shot himself. Now, really, Inspector, doesn't it sound silly even to you? They all came from Liège. Well, that's not an indictable offence. This comes from Liège, too. It's a large town. Yeah. Yes, it's a large town. So now may I go? Mm -hmm. I may? As you say, it's no crime to be born in Liège. I can return to Holland. Or anywhere else you please. Oh, well. Good night, Inspector. Good night, Monsieur Van Damme. You can. Quick, up. After him. Right. Uh, do I need a gun? No, no, he's not dangerous. What's he done? Puts me under a train. Not dangerous? No, oh, it's all right. He helped me up again. Go on, get after him. Hey. Go on. Wake up. What? What? Who are you? What do you want? Oh, Inspector Megre? Mm-hmm, that's me. Ah, there's a picture on this piece of paper. I would never have seen it. I never looked at the papers, only my wife had wrapped some fish in it, and I looked at it, and the picture was on it. Well, who's it a picture of? My brother. Come on in. Oh, it's all right. I've got a much better one here. Uh, is that him? Yes. That's Jean. Jean? What was his other name? Le Coq d'Anville. Jean Le Coq d'Anville. Hmm. So he's not Louis Jeunet? I'm his elder brother. Armand d'Anville. My papers. I'm Belgian. Yes? Born there. Good. The last 12 months I've been all over the place. Mm -hmm. Including prison? Yes. I joined the army and deserted. I'm a clerk at a furniture factory at EC. Says here you're a mechanic. Well, I was then. I lost the job. I'm not much use at anything. Mm -hmm. Sit down, monsieur. Tell me about your brother. Oh, Jean was different. He was the brainy sort. He won a scholarship at the university, and everyone said he should do well. But how did he come to shoot himself? Have you any relations still in Liège? None. <laughs> You see, my father went off with another woman just about the time Jean was born. We'd no money at all. We lived wretchedly. My mother went more or less off her head. She used to nag at us all the time. In the end, I couldn't stand it any longer. I left. Mm. Oh, I did go back to Liège after my bit of trouble, but they told me that my mother had died in a home, and Jean had left about two years after me. That would be about ten years ago? No one knew where he'd gone, and I never heard of him again. And then I saw this picture, and he's dead, and it's... Uh, well, it's a shock. Mm. Did you know anyone called Van Damme in Liège? Van Damme was the grocer of that name. Or Belvoir. Belvoir. Lomba. Mm. Oh, there was a Dr. Belvoir, but the other one, I don't know. It's a mm. long time ago. All right. Thank you, monsieur. You think it would be possible to see him, my brother? Tomorrow. Here. Yeah. Keep this. Are you certain that he killed himself? Certain, monsieur. He died by his own hand. He was always so happy as a child. By your own hand. With my help. Yes. Who? Luca? Where are you? In Liège. Our man's waiting for a taxi. He seems to have got one now. I'd better leave you. Luca? What's the matter? He's Luca. He's followed a man all the way to Liège and he doesn't even know what his name is. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, I suppose I'd better go and tell him. Mm. 
Frenchman. You know, it's curious. I often drink Belgian beer in France. But when I'm in Belgium, I drink English beer. And in England? Ah, there I drink Scotch whiskey. <laughs> well, how did you lose Van Damme? He must have known I was following him. He dodged into the old town. It's a maze of alleyways. I didn't have hope. I'm sorry. Well, it's my fault. I should have sent someone he hadn't seen before. Well, what did he do before you lost him? He went to the local newspaper office. And? Asked to see back numbers. What year? Well, they wouldn't tell me. I hadn't time to go to the Belgian police. I had no authority. Hmm. I think they're open now. They should be at this time. Get along there again. Ask to see the file for 1951. Good. What am I looking for? I have the faintest idea. Waiter. Oh, yes, I have. Look for the one that's missing. <laughs> the one that's missing. And you? Yeah. I think I'll go and see Monsieur Van Damme. You know where he is? Yeah, I think so. See you back here in one hour. Monsieur. Jeff, for heaven's sake. I'm sorry, I can't help being nervous. Do you think I'm not? That's different. Yeah. Now, don't worry and keep calm. It's our only hope. Yes? A man to see you. Perhaps it's a customer. Oh, no, Monsieur Beauvoir, just an old acquaintance. All right. Well, you must all be very fond of your old university or college, whatever it was. Wherever I go, there's another reunion. What do you want, Inspector? Just one little piece of information, Monsieur Van Damme. Did you ever know anyone called Jean Lecoq d'Anvie? Do pick up your cigar, Monsieur Belois. It's burning a hole in your friend's carpet. I can't stand it any longer. Well, I'm sorry, but really, I, I can't. It's the waiting. Yes? My wife's having a baby. The midwife's with her now, along in our bedroom. I... I must go and see. I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Hmm. They're first? No, they're third. They have two boys. They want a girl. You gentlemen will be the godfathers, eh? Yes, that's why we're here. That's what I thought you'd say. <laughs> Is Monsieur Lombard doing well? Well enough. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, in the provinces, there's no big money to be made in photography. No. Oh, Belfry at Bouge. He was a painter, you said, didn't you? That's not bad. Quite a talent. Uh, one has to be outstanding to earn a living. Mm. And make some concessions to popular taste. Eh? I shouldn't think that would appeal to many people. Huh? <laughs> Jeff is a fool. Yeah. Isn't it strange how artists become obsessed by a subject? Always a church and always men hanging from it. From the clock, from the, from the finials, from the gargoyles. And always the same church. Do you know it? Yes. It's the church of St. Folian. St. Folia. Oh, I've seen a lot of churches in Liège, but I don't remember having seen St. Folia. It was pulled down five years ago. They drove a new road through. Ah. I thought these must have been done some time ago. Ten years ago, Monsieur Van Damme? <laughs> no idea. And Jeff's not as good as all that. They might be any mm. church. Well, let's say it's the church of St. Folia. Let's say it's ten years ago. Ah, oh, something written on this one. Not much help. It's... François Villon, I should think. Pecked and picked to a clatter of bone, washed by rain and seared by sun. Leave us forever, swinging alone. God forgive us for what was done. A girl. Oh, it's a girl, and they're both well. Oh, she's beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations, Jeff. And mine. Oh, you must all drink her health. Oh, you, you don't mind Dutch gin, do you? Tell me, Monsieur Lombard, what was it that God must forgive?
<laughs> you seem very pleased with yourself. Ah, <laughs> Bertrand. A lovely town, Bertrand. Delightful people. Yeah, one of them just shot at me. <laughs> Did he hit you? <laughs> well, what to find out? Well, I inspected the files. And? Uh, one paper was missing the 20th of February, 1951. Nine years and nine months ago. Uh -huh. Then ascertained the duplicate copies of the daily paper he kept at police headquarters, so I went there and I made myself known. And they entertained you? Well, they, uh... <laughs> they were very amiable. Yeah, I'm sure they were. Well, did you see the paper? Mm. In the end. Would it be too much to ask what was in it? Uh, no, no, not at all. They had very bad floods that year, Patron. Yeah. The, the river rose, it covered everything. I understand. What else? Mm. Oh, I made notes of all the fatalities, masses of fatalities. Well, was there anything about a church called Saint Folia? Saint Folia? You all went on and on about oh, Saint Folia. Find it. Uh, I've got my notes here. I, I... Here, here we are, the father of five run over by a tram car. Uh, <laughs> it's here somewhere. Here we are. In the early hours of the morning, a policeman made a strange discovery. You won't be the only policeman to do that if you don't hurry up. <laughs> the body of a man was found hanging from the door knocker of the church of saint Folien in the 6th district. It was discovered to be that of a student called Klein, who lived at number 10, Rue Podeau Noir. <laughs> Podeau Noir, what a funny name to give a street. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> yes, that's enough. Oh, a man was bitten by a mad dog. All right, all right, you go. I found out what I wanted to know. Good. What now? Now you've just got time to return to Paris on the night train. Oh, but Patron, what about, uh, what about, uh, Yeah? You. Me? I've got another call to make. But if people are shooting at you, you need help. I understand. The Belgian police are most amiable. <laughs> They're very friendly. You're not going to call them, are you? No, not yet. Well, then. Look, we can't both stay away from Paris on a case that may not even be a case at all. Well, what else could it be? I don't know, Luca. I don't know. At first, I thought it was some international conspiracy. Spying, drugs, something of that kind. But now I'm not sure. It looks like some... Sort of class reunion. Mm, very sort of class this minute. I'm trying to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Two men have died. How tall was Klein? We didn't say, but he must have been pretty small to hang himself from a door knocker. Uh, and three men have died. Oh, who was the third? The owner of the suit. Come on, let's go. <laughs> uh, Want to go up? Klein's room. The top. Been here before? No. Yeah. There's one up there now. Who? Oh. I don't know names. One of them. So, this is what you've been hiding, 
under your stones. And exactly the background for a man of the world like you, Monsieur Van Damme. Hmm? He's by Lombard, aren't he? Ten years ago? Ah. He's better then than he is now. Ah, here's the man I'm looking for. Man who killed himself, Jean Lecoq d'Armeby. He was certainly better ten years ago. Inspector, mm -hmm. how much? What? How much do you want? Fifty thousand? A hundred? No, two hundred thousand francs. After all, nothing can happen to you if you drop the case. There's no official inquiry, is there? And only a month's delay, that's all I ask. A month? No time at all. So it happened in December. I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. You know very well that there's an act of limitation in this country. On any crime, no action can be taken after ten years. So it isn't the death of Klein that's on your conscience. He died in February 1951. That's only three months to go before the ten years are up. So, what happened? You only want one month. What happened in December 1950? Nothing. There's nothing you can find out. Then why are you so frightened? 200,000 francs down, then later perhaps we can arrange something else. Do you want to be hit? No, don't. Van Damme, whatever else you are, you're not stupid. Sit down. Ah, there's one of you. Put on weight in the last ten years. Well, don't be ashamed of it. So am I. Anyway, it means that the suit doesn't belong to you. No, no, it isn't mine. Come in, Monsieur Belvoir. Non Where is he? He's on his way here. He was with me. I tried to stop him, but he broke away. He's like a madman. Is he armed? Yes. Where were you? In his house? Yes. Waiting for the result of my interview with him? Yes. So the offer came from all of you. <laughs> Not Jeff. He can't afford any more. Well? Yeah, we were young. After it happened, after we left here, I hadn't a sou. You two are successful. You can't imagine what it's been like for me, scraping and saving for nearly ten years. I married. I wanted children. Somehow we managed to live fairly decently. Life was beginning to look a little better. And now this happens. It's the end of everything. Which of you is going to tell me what he's talking about? And I come in. I hope I don't disturb you. But I couldn't resist coming up to take a look at you all again. <laughs> oh, it seems a long time, doesn't it? And you still owe me for the month before you left. 20 francs, remember? Oh, I don't want it. You needn't worry about that. As a matter of fact, I've had it already. Uh, I hope you don't mind, but I sold a couple of your paintings to a dealer. Remember how you told me that one day they'd be worth more than this house? <laughs> I got 20 francs for two. <laughs> you still paint, eh? Sometimes. Well, here's all your early work. I never painted it over, just in case you did well. You see, I never bothered to let this room again. I keep it as a storeroom. <laughs> it is good to see you all. I don't remember you. Were you one of them? No. No, oh, I thought not. <laughs> they were boys. My wife didn't want me to let them have the room, but I used to get a good laugh out of them. Wide hats they wore and long clay pipes they smoked, and each tried to wear odder clothes than the others, and they sit up here talking and painting and arguing until the dawn came up. Oh, girls there were, too. Mm, pretty girls. Now, what's happened to her? She married a tram driver. Fancy. Well, well, I mustn't keep you. I expect your things to talk about. But I've enjoyed seeing you all. <laughs> it's made me feel young again. <laughs> See you later. Things to talk about. What was this? Some kind of secret society? Of a sort. That's what we call ourselves, the Companions of the Apocalypse. No, it was infantile. Why talk about it? It's too late now. We've got to talk. I will. Let me. I've been waiting all these years to tell someone. It was over ten years ago. 
I was an art student and so was Klein. We shared this room. We, we wore ridiculous clothes and we were going to put Picasso in his place. Neither of us had any money, but gradually we made friends with other students who had. I was studying economics. I was on a commercial course. Yes, they were going to remold the finances of the world. And then there was Jean Lecoq d'Anville reading literature. He was poor too, and he was going to be another Tolstoy. But he killed himself. And Klein killed himself. Why? No, you must let me explain. You must see how it was, the life we led. We, we were all of us taken by the medieval air of this room. We read Villon aloud and thought him a splendid fellow. And then Klein found the book of Revelation and we learned whole passages by heart. We'd sit up all night drinking cheap wine and airing fantastic theories. Would you remember my great theory that pain was an illusion? And stuck a knife into your arm to prove it. I still have the scar. So have we all. Yes. You see, it was harmless the way it began. I mean, it was just youth and high spirits, but well, some of us were affected more than others. You two went home at dawn and climbed through your bedroom windows into family life and family meals. But Klein and I lived here. This room was always with us. Uh, Jean Darnaby? Well, he went home to a mad mother and not enough to eat. That was our main trouble, food. We always brought some. Oh, yes, but Klein had got out of the habit. He would do nothing but drink. Then he tried sniffing ether, and his girl was terrified. She never came here again. Nor any of the girls. So the six of us were on our own. Six? Yes, there was Klein and Belvoir and Van Damme and myself and Jean Danville. Five? And there was Mortier. I'll say it. And there was Mortier. You see, we chose that number from the book. Six. Six, six, six. The mark of the beast. Oh, but Mortier was never really one of us. He was too rich. His father dealt in offal and gave him a lot of money. He used to pay his girls. He never drank with us. He said we drank too much. But he used to come. After the cabarets closed, he'd come along and he'd condescend to talk with us. Why did you let him if you didn't like him? We didn't know how to stop him. We were young. That was the trouble. Young and full of wine and mad ideas. Oh, but Klein had the maddest. How did it start? We decided that we were anarchists. Someone had thrown a bomb in Spain. Oh, yes, and we talked about it. And Klein thought it must be a wonderful thing to do, to kill a man. And we agreed. Well, I'd have to agree with Klein. He got so angry. Oh, generally, we'd take up a subject like that for a week or two and then drop it again, as we did with writers and painters and philosophers. There's always a new one when you're young. But Klein wouldn't drop the subject of murder. Every time he was drunk, he would return to it. And the last time? It was Christmas night. Well, we were all drunk then. Except Mortier, who hadn't arrived. He was dining with his family. The rest of us had brought food and drink. Even Jean Danville had managed half a ham and a bottle of burgundy. Klein was away on his hobby horse, shouting how a man must kill to prove his own strength. How it's a law of nature for the great to devour the small, that pity was merely weakness and that life was a skin disease of the earth. And then someone said, very well, Klein, if you really believe that, why don't you kill someone yourself? He said, I will. And then there was a pause, because the rest of us felt that it had got too real. You began to sing Liber Annos. As a joke, I'd been a choir boy. And then? It opened, like that. Mortier came in, up the stairs, and he stood there, wearing a dinner jacket and looking pleased with himself. Klein went up to him his hair down over his forehead, and his tie round the back of his neck. Go and find us something to drink, Mortier. Yes. And Mortier said, you're drunk already. I only came to wish you a Merry Christmas. To look at us like animals in the zoo. Well, that's what you are, animals. Look at you, Klein. You're as drunk as a pig. Then this little pig says, go and buy some drink. Mortier was a bit frightened. Nobody was laughing, but he was well-dressed and full of food. And his hair was waved, and he answered back. Not very gay, are you? They're more cheerful at all. Go and buy some drink. Yes. That's what Klein said. We heard it. But the rest of us didn't see very much. We were only half watching. We saw Klein strike at Mortier, but we didn't see the knife. Only the blood on his shirt front. Look. No. Yes, this is my part of the story. I tell this, it happened to me. We saw the knife when he pulled it out. And Mortier still stood there, swaying. He always had large eyes, but now they were enormous. You'd have thought they were drunk, apart from the, the blood. It was Klein who'd fallen to the floor, collapsed in a heap. 
Mortier stood there. One hand on his jacket button. The other hand went to his pocket. He pulled out a small automatic. He wouldn't die. He just stood there, looking round from one to the other of us. He's trying to pull the trigger. And someone, someone jumped at him, slipped in the pool of blood, and they both went down. There. Mortier didn't want to die. But when he did, it was my hand round his throat. And my suit was soaked with his blood. Your suit? Mine. Go on. That's the end of my part of the story. We put Klein to bed and then took Mortier's body down to the river. It was running fast. A week or two later, there were floods. It was never found. Then we came back here and Maurice took off his suit. I went and found him one of mine. I left the suit here, made up some story for my parents about falling in the river. Weren't there inquiries when Mortier was missed? Oh, yes, but he never told anyone about us. Nobody knew except the five of us. Klein and Jean Danville stayed here. We three never came back. And two months later, Klein hanged himself. Yes. And you drew pictures of hanging men. Couldn't get it out of my mind. You went to France and prospered. I had to get out of Liège. You did well in the export trade. One has to live. And Jean Lecoq d'Arnoui, the man who killed himself? Five years later, he came to me. It was just after I'd become assistant manager at the bank. He'd become just like Klein. Yes, the same bitter, desperate look. Oh, he never got over it. He tried, he married, but it all turned to dust. <laughs> he never opened a book again. And the money? He thought we ought all to be like that. Guilty, haunted. He asked for money and we had to give it to him. He had my suit as proof. And do you know what he did with the money? Burnt it. And every franc that went up in flames was the fruit of our work and our efforts to forget. And why shouldn't we forget? We were children then. Now we have lives to lead. One more month and we would have been free. <sighs> Which one of you shot at me? I did. I only wanted to wound you to put you off. I, I couldn't bear the thought that after all this time and paying out so much money, it was to be for nothing. You tried to push me under a train. It was an impulse. There you were. I hardly knew I was doing it. And you helped to kill him. A boy was my name did that. You have one son now? Yes. You have three children? Now? Yes. Well, you'd better go home to them. that helps? Yes, I do. As much as anything. Let's go home. Madame, no news yet, but when I left Liège, he was about to make an arrest. I should think he's done it by now. Yes, I can usually tell when he's sure of his man. No, of course, the moment I see him, I'll tell him. Goodbye, madame. A patron, madame Maigret. Uh, uh, she's hung up. Come on. It's all right, I was just going straight home anyway. Oh, did you get them? No. But what happened? Nothing. Well, who were they? A children's party. Here, lose that. What about the money? Oh, yeah, 30,000 francs. 
Well, it had better go to Jean Darnavis' family, his widow, and his son. It seems that if a man has money to lose, he grows tough enough to survive. <laughs>